Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem minimum path sum. We are given an m by n grid filled with non-negative numbers. We want to find the path from the top left all the way to the bottom right, which minimizes the sum of all values along the path. So we start over here at the top left. We want to get to the bottom right position. We can take any path, but notice how we can only take a path where we basically we're only allowed to move either down or to the right at any point. So from here, we want to get to the path to the bottom right, minimizing the total cost or the total sum along that path, but we're only allowed to move down or we're allowed to move right at every single spot. So in this case, you can see that this path is, we have a total sum of seven and that is the minimum cost that we can get. Now at first glance, you know, the brute force is, you know, since we're over here, it's not four directional, right? We can't move in four directions, but we can move in two directions. So you might think, okay, for every single spot, let's consider the two directions we can move in. And, you know, having a decision tree like that, we'd have a lot of different paths, right? Something like two to the power of N and that would be very inefficient. But at the same time, you notice what exactly is the sub problem? Well, if we start over here, we're allowed to move either down. So either the path uh, can basically, the sub problem becomes, okay, what path, what's the minimum cost? Uh, going from here all the way to the bottom right or if we move to the right the sub problem becomes okay what's the minimum cost starting from here to get to the bottom right so that's the sub problem how many different possible sub problems do we have well n by m where these are the dimensions of the grid so then the question is if we you know do that recursive way that i was talking about with a decision tree and then we cache it we'll have you know n times m different sub problems so this will be the complexity but when you think about it a little bit more we don't actually need to do that brute force recursive way because think about it how are we going to get sub problems well the original problem is the top left corner the you know the, the the goal is the bottom right corner so this is kind of the base case right and this is the answer that we're trying to get this depends on the bottom value and the right value similarly this depends on the bottom value and the right value this depends on the bottom value and the right value etc etc all the way until we get to this bottom right corner and you know we instead of doing a top down recursive approach why not do a bottom up approach we start here and then we compute this position right Basically, this is a, a classic dynamic programming problem. We start here, compute the values going to the left, then go to the next row, compute the values like this, and then all the way until we've gotten this, right? We've computed all of these sub problems. And when I say sub problems, we, we want for every position to compute the minimum path sum from that position to the bottom right. And then once all of these are done, we can calculate this one very easily, right? So I'm going to actually initialize our two-dimensional grid like this. We know that this bottom corner is going to be the base case with one. And I'm going to have this kind of outside layer. Reason being uh, because, you know, for every position such as this one, we're going to have to look at the bottom value and we're going to have to look at the right value. Though I'm just going to initialize these outside positions to infinity just so that kind of the math works out. And you'll probably understand that a little bit better in the code. But when we start here... Uh, I'm just going to put a zero value here just to make this base case work out because as we compute the value here, how are we going to compute the minimum cost from here to get to the destination? Well, the main equation is basically going to be take the value that's stored here and then add it with the minimum of the value below and the minimum of the value to the right. So in that case, the minimum of these two is going to be zero. So the value that we're going to put here is just going to be one because one is the value uh, in that position now basically you know because you know once we get here we're going to say okay we're going to take the value here one plus the minimum cost that it takes from here to get to the result or the cost of here to get to the result right we're taking the minimum of these two adding it to the cost of this position itself so then when we get here we're going to do the same thing take the minimum of the bottom and the minimum of the right it's going to be one plus the value in this spot two plus one that's going to be three etc etc and then we're going to compute this 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 the exact same way right when we compute here we're going to take the minimum of this minimum of that add it with one which is the value that goes in this position and keep doing that for every single spot until we have computed this one 
So overall, in this solution, the time and space is going to be n by n. We're just having to iterate over the dimensions of this grid. Now, one thing you might notice is we actually can save space. We can actually make an O of n uh, memory solution or M depending on what the dimension of the row is because this is how we can do it, right? We don't actually have to have the entire grid in memory because, you know, when we're computing this row, we only have to depend on values in the previous row. And when we're computing this row, we only depend on values in the previous row because when we're computing some arbitrary position, right, we want to know the cost from this position, we only have to look below or look to the right. It's not like we have to look three three rows down, right? We don't have to actually have to look at some random row. We only have to look at the row directly below this one. So I won't be coding that solution, but I think it's a pretty easy optimization you can kind of make on your own. I'll just be coding this uh, n by m uh, memory solution. So without further ado, let's hop into the code. Okay, so now let's get into the code. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually just get the dimensions of the grid. So we wanna get the number of rows and we wanna get the number of columns in the grid. And remember the grid is always gonna be non-empty and the values in the grid are always gonna be greater than or equal to zero. I'm gonna initialize our result, uh, AKA basically our two dimensional grid. And remember, I'm gonna initialize it with infinity uh, in the, uh, you know, the edges. So I'm just going to initialize every value in here to infinity. And the dimensions basically of this grid are going to be uh, the number of columns plus one uh, and the number of rows plus one, right? We do have that extra layer on the outside. This is just a little easy way to initialize this in Python, but you can do it differently if you'd like or differently in your language of choice. And remember, uh, there's one value that we want to initialize to zero, even though the entire thing is infinity, we want to initialize one of the values to zero just to make the math work out. So I'm going to choose this position, this outside position to initialize it to zero. Now we are going to iterate through our grid uh, bottom up and then compute the value for each position. So this is how you can do it in Python. Basically, we're starting at the bottom right and then going in reverse order. And so this is basically the equation that I mentioned, right? So for a position in our result, this row column position, how are we gonna compute the minimum cost for this position? Well, we're gonna take the actual value at that position, grid row column, right? This The grid is our input and add it to the minimum cost of the below value and the value to the right. So let's take that minimum. So minimum of the below, let's call that row minus one at column uh, and the minimum of uh, row and column minus one this is the value to the right. So we'll take the minimum of these two values, add them to the value in that spot itself. That'll give us the result value. And we'll keep doing this for every value in our two dimensional result grid. And then what we're going to return is going to be the, the, we want to know the minimum path sum from the top left corner. So we can return re result of zero, zero and that is gonna be the entire solution. Oh, I just noticed, I, instead of doing minus one a row and column, we actually wanna do plus one because to get the below value, we have to add one to the row and get to get the right value, we have to add one to the column. So sorry about that little mistake. With that said, that is the entire solution. As you can see, it's a very efficient solution, but we can actually make one small optimization that I mentioned earlier. We don't actually have to store the entire 2D array in memory. We can just store one row at a time. That will improve the overall memory complexity, but not the actual time complexity. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.